Welcome to Power Word Fail, a Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition actual play podcast. My name is Carlos and I am the dungeon master for this alive group of heroes. But enough about me. Let's get to the real stars of the podcast, starting with Tyrell. Spock, some of this is my blood. Ian. I'm Bros Moussant. I was supposed to be a dragon negotiator. Andy. Pickles, the weak link. Nathan. Miraz, the uh, magnificent, alive and well. Katie. It only a ruin. Just grateful we made it through. And last but not least, Austin. Ferric, nightmare of dragons. And once again, my name is Carlos, and this is our first campaign, Chosen of the Crystal Crown. This is episode 21. And without further ado, let's check on the action. You hear those words ring through the cave as Marcus looks towards this beautiful, shining woman in the light. He falls to his knees and he just looks up and he just says, Delisi, um, it's you. You're, you're here. You're alive. The woman looks down and says, I am not alive. But I am here. Your friends must gather as she looks to all of you and beckons you with a hand. Ferrick steps forward. Are we just going to forget that she ate the girl? Pickles does not take a step forward. I'll look forward, but I'll have my hand on my holster. I'm not sure she really did eat the girl. Adalia will step forward. I thought she simply kidnapped the girl. They're the girl. (laughs) Julia. You need not fear me, she says. Okay. As she waits for you, those of you who do approach, and when those who do approach get within five feet of a couple, she looks down at Marcus and she says, My love, what have you done? What have you done to these people? What have you done to yourself? I just always look this way. That is fair. Fair kick spunk. <laughs> this is my blood. I know, shut up. But Marcus will look around. Uh, I did what I had to do. I did what I needed to do. You were gone, and there was Julia, and I couldn't live. I couldn't live without you. She'll look at all of you. She'll look at Marcus and say, My love, Julia is long gone. She was your daughter before, not with me. Looks at you, the lady Talisi. Are you friends with him? Marcus. Business associates might be. No, we are not. She's she's still way down at the bottom of the cliff, just yelling up. Hirelings at best. You must treat him kindly. We've tried. What happened here? I still don't quite understand. That is not my story to tell. She turns to Marcus, and Marcus looks and stands up, turns to all of you. Years ago. I lived in a small village not far from here. It was just me. My daughter Julia had drowned in the river. My wife left me after that. And I was lost until Delisi came. A traveler, dragonborn, hated, ridiculed, but I I didn't think that. I thought she was the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen. We traveled together. She was searching for a cure for darkness. Dark creatures were coming, and we did. We found the heart of darkness in a cave, just like this one. We defeated that creature, the heart of darkness. But the world didn't know. The world didn't know about that. They just saw her. They saw who she looked like, a dragon, and that's all they saw. One night, I was away hunting, and they set our house on fire with her in it. I came back. My wife was gone. I found those bastards and I killed them. Everyone with my bare hands. I hate them. I hate every single one. They killed her. They killed her and they didn't have to. She was my world. I became dark. I became lost again. Till a man came to my door my new home. He tried to pawn off me a box. And I said no. Then he gave me a coin and said it would fulfill my every dream. And it did. 
My daughter was back. My wife was back, but not the same. They were different. And my soul went away until I could feel nothing anymore. <laughs> About a week or so ago, things were different. But my wife, who I thought was my wife, became violent and angry. And the last thing I remember is where you found me. <laughs> That's what happened here. My hatred, my hatred gave birth to this. And now I'm alone again. Yeah. It was not your hatred. It was your hope. Your hope to bring back your family. Your hope to find the normalcy. I cannot blame you for that. I can. Hope and Death love. is not a reason to make deals with evil beings. Death is not a reason to do stupid shit. He almost got us all killed. Are we forgetting this? Mirage purposely looks away from Pickles. Listen, I don't know why all of you guys are just so willing to forgive this asshole. I don't give it. Do, do you realize what just happened? Oh, I don't forget this, man. I agree with Pickles. Pickles is just going to pick up Spunkles and start walking out into the cave. She's just she's just out. Seriously, Marcus, go fuck yourself. And I turn around and walk away, too. After you give us our money. <sighs> Asshole, you, before you walk out of here, let me ask you a question. You say, fuck me. You say, fuck myself, whatever. Fuck you. Let me ask you this. You ever lost someone you loved? Someone you care about? You ever see someone die before your eyes? You ever held someone close and then they're gone, stripped away from you forever? You presume we haven't? I turn my head while I'm walking away. I have my head slanted, turned to the right. You're not the only main character in this world. And I'll walk away. I'll take that as a yes. We do need our money. Miraz will follow after uh, Ambrose and Pickles. <sighs> You'll find the money at my house. I hope your friends learn. Some have yet to find out that death is the only reason why we live. Shall I sing? Yes, sing. And Farrak will pull out a drum and start playing a funerary song so that Marcus can say goodbye. Her soul must bridge the gap. I hope you know this, Marcus. And then the light thumb banging against the drum and my my hoots and chimes. Marcus will approach the figure of Talisi and he'll hold out his hands and she'll take it and he looks up at her she smiles at him her beauty extravagant he says I'm so sorry I'm sorry I was weak or you were strong I'm sorry I I couldn't live in a world without you. I'd rather see it burn. There is nothing more destructive than hope and love. Hate is something cold. Love burns. You shouldn't allow the feelings you had for your wife and daughter to burn, burn down the world or anyone else in it. It is not a fitting tribute. Maybe you're right. I speak from experience. Talisi will look at all of you and she'll say, Marcus has done what he has done and now you must do what you must do for my husband's grievances and for putting you in danger. I will use what little strength I have left in this world and give you a gift. My power is not transferable, but I can see, see into the future or the past. Images, nothing concrete. I have the ability to do this three times. Would you take this gift? And she'll wait for an answer. I want a gift. What does repentance entail? Marcus will stay with me. Adalia will look at Marcus. How does he seem to feel about that? He doesn't really respond. He's just fixated on his wife. It's just Adalia, Farrakh, and Spunk, right? That is, that is correct. Yep. Okay. Yep. So All right. We each get one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Spunk. What? Did you want to go first? You seemed eager. Okay. All right, ready for the thing. <laughs> Perhaps you should ask her a question. I can see the past, the future, or the present. If I can answer, I will. It may not be as clear as what you would hope. Um. Okay, I'll go last. I can't remember what I wanted to ask. I know. Is 
is going to Mornstead to ask the help of Ambrose's family. The best way to defeat theirs. Are we on the right path? The right path is the one you seek and you stay committed to. Is it the best course of action? Even I cannot know that. But I see fire in your future. I was born of the fire. I do not fear it. Not you, dear. Not you. Him. She'll point to Farrick. Farrick will growl. (sighs) Who is next? Where do I first meet the prince? His name is not familiar to me. Might they go by another name? I tell everyone else to close their... to, to plug up their ears. Adalia will do so. I would like to know where I first meet Halazar. <sighs> ah, so you call him the prince. It is a colloquialism. You will find the prince. The place where you became who you are. I see trees. I see buildings burnt. And I see an altar. And I see this one there. Points to Spunk. But that is all. I look over to Spunk and I reach out and I take Spunk's hand. (laughs) A little poisonous. (laughs) I think you have the last question, my friend. I don't know. I don't know what to ask about stuff like that. I think you do. Adalia will uh, take Spunk's other hand. Aren't there things from your past you would like answers to as to how they Farrick is just shaking it their head no <laughs> like stop <laughs> don't, don't things... bring up Spunk's past <laughs> Spunk has talked really openly to Adalia about his past she doesn't know <laughs> I want to talk about that Ixnay asked Pay. <laughs> doesn't know about that <laughs> oh, uh... if not that is there something perhaps about Spunkles that is your future is it not? Yeah, how awesome Spunkles gonna be? Spungles, what is... Hmm. He's my dragon baby. I see. Blood, teeth, gnashing, gnawing, biting of who looks like the one who walked away. Dang. <laughs> so pretty awesome, right? This is not always what it seems, though. Be mindful. Now... I must leave. Marcus, you shall come with me, my love, for I have missed you. Release the hate and join me, for hate might be strong, but love is stronger. You are love. Adalia is going to cast Druid Craft and create some flowers like the ones that grew outside their house, their farmhouse, and hand them to Marcus. He'll take them. For your love. For whom you would do anything. Here, listen. My home. You may take the 5,000 gold. Whatever you're owed. Here's the key. He will give you an iron key from his person. Use that. That should uh, give you something extra, I'm sure. Thank you, Marcus. May you know peace. And time. Here. He unbuckles his sword and hands it to you as well. I'm not going to be needing this anymore. I will use it. To defend those who still believe in love like this. Thank you. I'm sorry. Never be sorry for loving. I am sorry for the hate. You said you're going to Mornstead, right? Yes. I see got a man. Vilvanus. Vilvanus? He owns a store on the lower quarters there. All right. Tell Marcus sent you. That was what I was going to ask. Is there anyone else would like us to deliver messages to you. There's no one out. Turns to to Lisi and they embrace in a hug and you see tears running down his face and as the tears run the starlight centers on them. You see the familiar crystallization at the bottom of their feet and it comes up and crystallizes both of them fully encompassed, fully entombed. Crystal is see-through and you see the two both smiling. Adalia will fall to her knees before these two figures 
and she'll cast Druidcraft as many times as she needs to to fill the base of the cavern with the flowers that grew outside their farmhouse. Rest easy. And then she'll turn to Theric and Spunk. Shall, shall we go? Theric will not. Okay. Christopher will, who has been silently standing and watching Jeez. all this unfold. <laughs> Christopher. <laughs> Holy shit. Dude, you gotta breathe or something. God. You're so quiet. Sorry. I, I didn't mean to do that. I just, that was really beautiful. Here. And he'll hold out his hand and the little bunny will form. <laughs> and he'll just hop it off and a bunny will continuously hop around and beautiful, pure white. And that is that. All right. I guess we keep walking until we rejoin the people who pieced out of that situation. <sighs> I mean, Pickle's been walking full steam ahead. Out. Now, how are we getting back up to the thing we fell down? I don't know. A good question. Let me set the scene real quick for you, just uh, before you. There is a second exit, I believe. <laughs> I think there was another exit in that cave, wasn't there, to the north? Yeah. Okay, that's, that's so, the oh, way I okay, assume okay. Pickle's wet, because she yeah. was already up there. Yeah. There. So you... Uh, Basically, there are two e- as entrance and exit to that cave. You, the three of you who stormed off, would have gone through that exit, and the rest of you, after a short while, would have followed behind the crystallization, which was prevalent in the beginning of your uh, your exploration of this cave, is no longer there. Now, the dirty, muddy, moldy walls of cave, the smell of wet. The smell of mud, the smell of whatever else smells funky in this cave is prevalent and fills your nose. The walls are as high as they were, but you feel a breeze, a draft heading towards uh, the main uh, cavern. You Eventually you do meet up with each other and what's some of the first reactions that happen when you all come together? I guess what, Pickles? Spunkle's gonna eat you someday. Isn't that great? No. Yeah, that's what it says. Nash and Bloody is going to eat pickles <laughs> to get stronger and more awesome for a good cause. She just glances over. I do And not then believe. just looks away. And she just, she's not, she's going. She's out, 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 I out. I do not believe in fortune tellers. You cannot read truth into your interpretation of such things. Well, okay. How is Spunkles, what is Spunkles doing? Just hanging out right now with Spunk? Yep. Uh, with Pickles, actually. Pickles has Spunkles. Pickles took Spunkles when she left. But Spunkles is just kind of in the hood, wrapped up, and just you can okay. see and looks at all of you, looks at uh, the group and just says, Peace, 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 peace. All right. No peace right now, Spunkles. Um, Marcus is not going to be joining us. He gave us permission to rest for the evening, morning, I don't know what time it is, at the farmhouse and to take our payment from what we find there. And he gave us a name in Mornstead. Ambrose, do you know it? Vilvanus? Vilvanus? Vilvanus. I look into the sky, eyes rolled up. DM, would I know that name? Uh, you don't go ahead and make a make a history check. Cool, cool. And got Come on, go buddy. History. I think I am. I should be. I'm not. Interesting. Um, natural one. <laughs> oh, <Nope>. no. <laughs> not a clue. I'm in such a bad mood, I'm just not thinking about it. No, I don't know that name at all. All right. Then we are in no worse a position than we were before. I beg to disagree. We've lost so much time. All right. Well, shall we go and rest? I find myself most depleted. I nod. I second to go to rest. I wouldn't mind pressing on toward uh, Wanstead, but I see the prudence of resting in a safe place. So, yes. How's, how's everyone looking on health? Like, who looks the worst? Adalia is at 100%. <laughs> so is Miraz. <laughs> okay. But I know that everybody else took kind of a hammering. How's Spunk and Farrick? Yeah. Farrick ha- has pretty much gotten, like, Brought to the brink of death and then brought to the brink twice. of life and then oh, okay. brought to the brink of death again. <laughs> like, hell passed over twice. 
Adalia is physically fine, but her magic is basically gone. So we definitely need a rest. Anyone below ha- half or anything? Oh yeah, Ferrex won't blow half. Okay, uh, pulling out a big syringe. I'm gonna cast a second level cure wounds for Ferrex. Ah, so top them off. And this one, yeah, right into your. You get to choose actually. What would you like this? Uh, and just in the shoulder, please. Okay. The cheeks. And, uh, <laughs> no, yeah, I was gonna say cheeks. face too. Uh, put it right into his <laughs> shoulder. The cheeks, they meant it's a stuck. long syringe. It just looks so uncomfortable. And it just goes in. Where is my cure wounds? I forgot to prep cure wounds. I haven't completed. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> you just get jammed with <laughs> syringe. You get nothing out of it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Well, after the rest. <laughs> um, seeing Ambrose sort of fail at that, Adalia will reach out one hand and use her very last spell slot to cast Healing Word on Farrick, just in case. Sorry, I thought I packed in my bag. I, I can't find it, so and I just throw it on my bag. No, it's okay. I'd rather take a gentle crest than a needle. Uh, so Adalia runs her hand down Farrick's arm. Buck up. What you call? <laughs> <laughs> I am too tired to to banter with you this evening, Farrick. Perhaps in the morning. Farrick does a eyebrow wiggle and uh <laughs> <laughs> Adalia smiles but is otherwise too exhausted to to respond to that. Uh yeah, Farrick is head head now. Making like an infant head out. Yeah. Head out. That was a joke that you told. <laughs> Um, yep. <laughs> yep, that was the thing that was said. And uh, yeah, just head back to the farmhouse. Adalia needs a rest. Yeah, Miraz is very quiet on the walk. It looks as though he's speaking to himself. He's just kind of mouthing words and gesticulating and like counting on his fingers and then kind of scrapping that. But he is otherwise very disengaged from the party. Pickles is going to be on your heels, whether you like it or not. Okay. I was just going to say, Adalia would try to catch up with Pickles, if that's possible. Probably creepily following Miraz, <laughs> so you could easily get her. I'm stealthing. Eventually, going through the caverns, uh, it seems as though whatever befell that crystal tomb is gone, and the way out is much easier than the way in. You do make your way eventually past rock, tunnel, Maybe tripping a couple times. A small opening appears before you and you uh, walk onto the sunrise. Beautiful purple painting the sky. You remember it was like two o'clock when you started right. in that journey in the morning. So it is now sunrise. You may now continue on with your talk. Uh, Farrick will start heading like around, kind of trying to triangulate where they left the horses. Mm-hmm. Go and make a survival check if you want. It's a 16. With a 16, you're able to you look around, you see some things that you seem familiar. Maybe you're even able to catch a footprint that you're able to deduce where the, you left the horses. Uh, it does take uh, an hour or so of, of walking. Uh, is there any kind of questions or talks that happen while you're walking? Adalia would like to catch up with Pickles. Um, Pickles. Yep. May I offer my sincerest apologies for catching you up in my spellcraft earlier. It was unintentional. It was my fault. No, it was my foolishness. No. I truly am sorry. It's okay. You know, I got, I got encased, and then I got out, and then... I got encased again, um, and then it, sh- it it was my fault. I got, I can, Next time I'll be better. It's okay. It was not your fault. It was mine. Who told you it was your fault? It's always my fault. Who made you believe that? She just thinks for a while, carefully choosing her words, you can tell. And she just goes, my f- father a bit, um, but it's it's always always been clear in the family. It's how I, I got here. It. I know what it is to have very high expectations, but 
No matter what you were made to believe, what happened in the cave was not your fault. I appreciate that. Definitely wrong. Um, but... Have I ever been anything less than honest with you, Pickles? Honestly, I don't know. I don't really pay that close attention. And... Well, I mean, judging from Mraz, uh... Mm. Yes. I, Hello. Sorry. <laughs> she just... I heard my name. <laughs> I mean, you know this. I'm not trying to hide it from you. Remember, no secrets. Um, I do not catch on to lies very quickly. So I just, everything you could have said has been a lie. And I, again, I got to get better. Well, for what it's worth, I have never lied to you. If you ever fuck anything up, I will be the first to tell you without judgment. Pickles, I... Again, honesty, not lying to each other. I, I wasn't listening to most of that conversation you just had. Adalia kind of fades back. <laughs> she doesn't want to be involved. <laughs> does, she, does she do the finger waves of like... Yeah, she, she kind of does this. Just like... I don't, what's that? She jellyfishes away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> should I tell her we have like a dead her in the bag? No, we should not tell her that. Definitely okay. not tell... I mean, if she asks directly, then we should try not to lie and be honest, and I'm not good at that, but I'll try. Italia's passive perception is 23. <laughs> so she probably heard that whole thing. Oh, 100%. Um, but, Pickles, what I, I, I did hear, that, and I, I do agree with Adolia. I mean, you've gotten in these funks a couple times when we were traveling, just the two of us, and I, it's, it's not you. You're both the smallest and biggest friend that I have. I mean, Spunk is pretty small too. I think Spunk is a little bit smaller, but at least before Spunk we met Spunk. Is, uh, is Spunk not your friend? No, Spunk is my friend. That's what I'm saying. Okay, I'm... then he's your smallest Okay, so friend. you're right. My longest smallest. Well, what about Spunkles? Is Spunkles your friend? No, Spunkles is my nephew, I think. So that's yeah, some, some sort of different, <laughs> some <laughs> sort of different <laughs> categorization. My point, Pickles, <laughs> is that you're not the weakest link. You didn't mess everything up. How did you know those words? I'm sorry. Did I say those words? Was... Are you in my head? Were you in the dream? What? <laughs> what? No. I... No, I just want you to know that I don't believe that you need to be so hot on yourself. Hey, Maraz. Can I tell you something? Of course, Pickles. You can tell me anything. I love you. You're my best friend. And she just gives you a big hug. Oh, I hug her back. I want you. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too, Pickles. I'm gonna stop now because this is stupid. Okay, that's okay. Um, and I'll like awkwardly pat Pickles' shoulder as she pulls <laughs> away, and then I'll say, you know, Pickles, I, I can't be sure, but I, think I might have started to learn actual magic. What? You just told me you couldn't do it. Like I. That was two. I know. Two- Two days ago. I think how, it was two you... days ago. Maybe I just needed to be honest about wait, who I was. Wait. Get, was telling the truth the magic all along? Like, you I just had to it let it out? Been, and... Yes. <laughs> this is a breakthrough. I think so. All right, more I... truth. More truth, more magic. Right, I, I told... Uh, so the, the undead dragons rushed at me, and I yelled at one of them to stop, and it stopped. I'm not sure if that's magic, or if it just, like... You know what? We're going to go with it. I'm so I happy think we should go you. with it. It's so exciting. Thank you, Pickles. It's definitely magic. I I certainly hope so. We'll celebrate. Probably not with the dead lady drugs, though, because at, I think that would be inappropriate. At least not with Adoria nearby. Yes, I agree. Okay. Hide in the park. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Willing to snort dead lady, just not in front just of just lady front who of looks lady vaguely like dead lady. Who could theoretically be meth. Yeah. That's... Yep. That's great. That's a great, like, a very fine moral line you're drawing. I respect mm-hmm. that. Sure. Yeah, I respect. I, strong I Nathan boundaries. have been pondering the ethics of crystal-born meth for months, and I don't think. Yeah, we're there. It's, it's a wild time. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, uh, and I think Pickles and Raj just kind of just continue walking and chatting back to being friends, which hasn't happened in a while. Hey y'all, this is Austin, and I wanted to pop in here and say that this episode is sponsored by our friends over at Incarnate. 
As a fellow dungeon master, I know how stressful it can be to make maps in a short amount of time. But with the powerful tools over at Incarnate, you can make immersive maps without spending weeks locked in your room. Carlos uses Incarnate for Power Word Fail, and it's easy, affordable, convenient, and the maps will look absolutely amazing. Y'all, like, they're lush. Go check them out. They even have a free version. So head over to Incarnate and start making beautiful maps today. Again, that's Incarnate with a K, incarnate.com. Now, back to the story. Um, I'm going to be keeping an eye out as well as like being stealthy further up. Spunk's like really going to need a body of water. Um, Soon. Yeah. I was just going to say that Adalia has been trying to keep her eye out for a place that Spunk could, you know, find some respite. Yeah. When you get to the horses, there was a body of water close to the horses. I don't know if you remember that was a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, when we do that, Spunk's going to want to go. And I don't know if it'd be noticeable, but if asked anything, he'd be cagey. And if anybody asked to come, he would say no. Pretty, like, straightforward and then just leave. Adalia is <laughs> going to follow him whether he wants her to or not. Because Spunk I'm was shook up. He was shook. Her. He was shook earlier. So she's not going to. I mean, I really wanted a bath. I'm really shitty right now, but I guess I'll respect his wishes. <laughs> no, Adalia has no respect for his wishes. She's gonna try to track him. <laughs> Raz, it's drug time. <laughs> um, when <laughs> he gets to the... Spunkles perks up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I drove my line there. That's how someone gets eaten. It, it's crystal, not perks. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I'm not really like thinking anyone's gonna follow me anyways um once uh spunk gets to the little pond he like starts to take off his little now bloodied again robes um and when he gets his robes off uh there's just massive gaping open claw wounds um and he's very visibly on the edge of death and he just like slowly walks into the water up to his little until just his like eyes are and he just like kind of sits there in the water as like blood just kind of reds the pond. Um, Adalia will come out of the woods. Uh, and in common, I have depleted my magic for the day, Spunk. You'll have to forgive me. I wouldn't let you use it anyways. I told you not to come. I disobeyed. Are you all right? Not this. And she kind of like gestures to all the blood before. When we were in the cavern with the crystal. Fag shouldn't have brought me back. He should have left me be. No, they shouldn't. We need you here. I don't know who made you feel as if you were not needed, but they were wrong. You'll all die. Everyone dies. You'll die because of me. No, we'll die because of the choices we make. No offense, Spunk, but you are not that important. You'd be surprised. Is there anything I can do to ease your pain? Or to offer you comfort? You need the pain. No. The pain. Pain keeps you running. Pain keeps you afraid. I do not believe in fear as a motivator. All I have ever seen fear do is stamp people down. They call me the hero of the North Beach once. I heard they called you a king once. Do you want me to tell me about it? They called me the race ender in the end. Twice betrayer. You are the last of your kind. Is that not true? Yep. I am the last of my kind in Northwatch. The last of my kind I have ever known. Do you think me a bad person? I don't know what good or bad is. I do. Shall I help you figure it out? I don't know if it matters. It does. It always matters. (sighs) We've had a long day. I will not subject you to more philosophical conversations. Enjoy your bath, Spunk. I will keep watch. Okay. Hey, will you keep Farrick safe when I die? I will keep you alive so that you can keep Farrick safe. I like Farrick. Me too. He doesn't deserve to die. No one does. Except perhaps Zeus. What an asshole. Yeah. You are not going to die, Spunk. And neither is Farrick. Not as long as I'm alive. 
Yeah, you're right. He wouldn't let me die. No. He wants to make me suffer too much. Probably for a long time. Probably forever. I cannot heal the parts of you that are not visible. But if you want to talk about them, I am here. Farrakh is too. Okay. Enjoy your bath. Nothing will happen to you. I'm keeping watch. And he just floats with his little eyeballs sticking out of the water. Yeah, Adalia's just going to keep watch for the rest of the of Spunk's bath. While we're back, I'm going to be rummaging through uh, Marcus's uh, old stuff. Nice. You eventually make your way uh, to the farm. The familiar farmhouse is there. Uh, go ahead and make an investigation check. Oh my god, it's seven. Mm. You find uh, a chest containing uh, gold, uh, the promised gold of 5,000 pieces. You also find uh, four potions of healing. Uh, They are standard potions of healing. You also find uh, various daggers, a short bow, uh, but nothing else worth of of value. I'm not looking for anything worth of value. I'm kind of looking for primarily just notes and letters or like a journal, if you had anything. Pickles is going to look for booze. (laughs) <laughs> uh, no journal, no writings, uh, but you do find plenty of booze, lots of wine, whiskey, lots of it. Miraz would be looking for, like, magical trinkets. He saw the sword that Marcus used and the, the runes on it, so trinkets, spell scrolls, anything of that nature, runes for pickles. Go ahead and roll investigation. That is a 27 with a crit. Wow. Hell yeah. Baby. Nice. My goodness. He searched the fuck out of your room, Carlos. Yeah. You have <laughs> yeah. so yeah. searched. Not my room. You've never been more searched. Not my not mine. I will give you the option. Do you want me to roll it or do you want to roll it? Fate is in your hands. It's a D one hundred we're talking about right now. So Okay, okay. Uh I will roll it. Let's see what happens. Okay, roll a D one hundred. I rolled a D zero. Let me try that again. That's impossible. <laughs> An 83. 83. Oh boy. Haha. <laughs> so, after some digging uh, and some stooping, you do find a loose floorboard right near the bed. You Classic. see a s- silvery box. As you open the silvery box, a beautiful silver rune appears. Beautiful, polished. Uh, it looks very impressive. The silver English. rune. Are, are you saying two words or one word? I'm just saying it. it's a silver colored rune. Got it. Okay. Mm. Okay. Nice. A silvery barb, some might say. <laughs> right. A silvery box. I would literally quit to just <laughs> find a new it's DM. It's a silvery barb rune. <laughs> right. Silvery barb rune. You know? hey, hey, Pickles, I think I found something for you. Let's uh, see if we can transcribe this, see if we can get anything out of it. Party? Party. We got booze. We got runes. It's just like old times. You've got drugs. What more do you need? Get super drunk and figure it out. <laughs> uh, Farrick's going to go over to Adalia um, and ask them about the key that they were given. Uh, I was just going to say that I would like to look around and see if there's any obvious place that this key fits into in the farmhouse. Uh, and I will use the help action to give them advantage. <laughs> That's fine. That's nice. Go ahead uh, with the rune. Uh, how are you just transcribing the rune? Um, I believe I have quite a bit of parchment in my pack. And uh, I'm sure Pickles has some paper that she's been, that she does paintings on and, and such. So using her paint and my ink, I imagine we just write it down and try to yeah in her in her so she she has her painting notebook and what she does and the back pages of that are just all of the research that her and Miraz have found through their travels so all the the runes the stories anything they have found thus far that's right yeah and mechanically Miraz doesn't have like identify or detect magic or anything like that so it takes a lot of trial and error i don't know how you want to roleplay that if like an arcana check is sufficient or if we need to wait days before that pans out. Adalia does have detect magic as a ritual. I have identify it, but I can do it tomorrow. Nice. Okay, well, would not be there. Um, but uh, in terms of the rune, uh, go ahead and just make an arcana check. Let's see 
how long the process takes. Uh, 16. Okay, wonderful. Uh, it's going to take you about an hour and a half or two okay. hours to fully... It's There's some pretty common similarities, I will say, between Fire Rune and this one. So take that with what you will. Any nice. old way. In- investigation by uh, Adalia, please. Uh, Adalia has advantage and a bardic inspiration. Advantage and bardic inspiration. Ooh, is that a D8? It's a D8. Yes. Nice. Excellent. Oh, I'm going to need it. Because that wow. was Ooh. fucking awful. Uh, hang on. That's a six with advantage. <laughs> yeah. Yeet. That is a six and a D8. Ooh. Oh, that's oh, not terrible. Seven. 13. That'll get you there for sure. Thankfully. Thank um, you, as, as you search the home very much close by, to the hidden board, you're able to find a somewhat covered attic, or not attic, a basement hatch door that if you were to pull open would lead down into a basement. Uh, it is not lit downstairs. Do either one of you have dark vision? Remind me. Farrak has do. dark vision. I believe you yep. both do have dark vision. Okay. Sure do. You're able to see down in this basement Mostly just storage, mostly just food. Uh, you see uh, vegetables, well, you see boxes of different clothing and uh, different sorts of tradables. But you also find two chests. Would you like to open them up? I would like to call Ambrose down and ask him to check for <laughs> traps. Yeah, I can look. That's fair. Uh, I'm going to scan through, look if there's any wires on the ground or anything. Was that investigation? Ease. I'll give you the help action if that's Thank you. okay. Uh, sure. I, I can't. You gotta wait for the roll. Seems to be no traps though, so you're good. Looks well, good to me. Then yeah, I'll open one. Okay. As you go to open it, nothing happens. It is locked though, so you need a key. A key. I pull out the iron key that I was given. Click, click. And it opens, and inside this wonderful chest, you will find eight more potions, but these of greater healing. Oh, shit. Eight po- potions of greater healing? That is correct. Okay. You also find a beautiful medallion, gold, intricate with a jade stone set on the middle. You also find three bags of gold. If you were to spend the time to count these out, you would see that each of these contains a thousand gold pieces. That is the one chest. Oh my god. Ambrose, could you look at the other? And I'll also provide the help action on this so he gets advantage. Okay, I'll look again. <sighs> Eleven. Uh, looks good. Not rolling on today. traps. <laughs> I'll have my hand out. Do you want to give me the key? Is it locked? It is locked with a key. Iron key. As boom, <laughs> you <laughs> you open, try to open the chest. Please make me a dexterity saving throw, please. Okay. No, Ambrose, please. Oh, Ambrose. Yeah. Twenty six should be good. Nice. As you what the key here, click, and from behind you, a wooden beam falls, and you are instantly dodge. And it smashes into the wall. Uh, would have hurt you pretty bad if it had connected, but you are safe. Okay, I was wrong about the traps, but I think that's the only one. So, uh, <laughs> right. I move the chest over and I, and I open it up. As you open the chest, there seems to be a lot more junk in this. Lots of paper, lots of writings. If you are take the time to move these writings out of the way, you are greeted with boar bags, but this time of silver. Well, there are nine bags. Nine bags. Three bags of silver, six bags of gold. So in total, that is 6,000 gold from one chest, 3,000 from the next, and then three bags of 1,000 silver, which you can do the math on that for the gold. Nine or 12,000 gold? Is that what mm-hmm. we have? Mm-hmm. Plus the writings. 
Was this man a banker? What the hell is going on here? There's so much money down here. Not quite 12,000. No, it's five plus three plus six. Oh, sorry. I thought it was three plus three plus six. Well, three of five silver. he gave you. Yeah, three of oh, silver. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Um, three, so 3,000 silver? That is correct. Um, okay. So um, how, how do we want to split this up? I want to give... I mean, I think everyone should take a potion of greater healing. Yep. I will split the potions of healing just number one. So I'll take one and someone else can take the other three. Mm-hmm. In terms of the paper and writings? Yeah. I mean, my instinct is to give it to Miraz. I don't know if that's the mechanically sound choice, but that's who I want to give it to. Okay. As you pick up the paper and the writings, you find that there's no blank paper and that each of these pieces of paper have poems written on them. Mm. Poems of various different varieties of sadness and sorrow, uh, of love, but most of them are dedicated to Talisi. And as you pick up and go towards and you have them in your hands, a letter falls out, wrapped in an envelope sealed with red wax. I'll snatch that up. And I'll hold up the medallion with the jade stone. Does anyone feel a strong calling towards this? Uh, I am someone who is highly interested in the fashionable, if that is what you are asking. It is. May I? Of course. And Farrakh will kneel down. Uh, And Adalia will reach up and fasten the medallion around their neck. Okay. It, nothing happens. It is a beautiful necklace. Nothing more. So how much are we splitting? Uh, that would be 2,383 gold uh, between all of us. Uh, 0.33 repeating. So. <laughs> Wait. You and I got very, very different numbers. Hmm. 5,000 plus 3,000 plus 6,000. Uh-huh. Plus That's 14,000. I rounded the the 3,000 silver into 300 gold and split mm-hmm. that as well. Okay, so you already divided among the party. I, okay, okay. Got it. Yes. Yeah, that's divided Got amongst uh, six of do us. We, do we wish to split it amongst individuals, or should we have some sort of communal fund? I've known you for like two days. That's very fair. Christopher this will say more... something. Oh. If you can't afford something with 2,000 gold, and I don't know what you need, all right? And I just put it in my bag. I I don't mean to interrupt. I'm sorry. Um, do I get gold? Do I get gold? Like... You must <laughs> of course, Christopher. Of course you get gold. You took, uh, you took all my gold. by seven. Okay, that's 2,042 gold for each of us uh, plus some change uh, which is not anything to uh, cry boohoo sad about that's still quite a bit of change I think the there. change can certainly go in the communal fund for inns, drinks, the like Eric, did you take out the tax for training them? <laughs> no, what? Christopher, you will get equal shares don't worry I mean, I killed a dragon Wait, why do you get to decide that he gets equal shares? I mean, I happen to agree with you. I do, Christopher. I think you are part of the party. But Aww. Maraz is very drunk at this point. You're lucky I can't even carry my gold or you wouldn't get any. Okay. Oh, I can carry your Christopher gold. Christopher may have whatever portion of my gold is needed to make him an equal partner. Same. Um, I think uh, Mr. Maraz and Pickles, are. have you, have you finished that rune yet? It looks interesting. At mm. this point, the time has passed for you to uh, and describe, transcribe that after the counting and whatnot of all the gold. Maybe I've painted it on a bunch of shit. Right. I think I think this is the rune of fire that's slightly more orange yellow than red orange than the regular fire. Uh, that's that's what I'm getting from it. Yeah. So what you have yourself there is a rune of bombardment. <laughs> <sighs> you can activate this rune with the power word of your choice. Once turn, one turn after activation, the weapon will produce a third level fireball spell. 
centered on the weapon. <laughs> <laughs> you can use this ability Amazing. once per day. Adalia would like to take an hour of time right now to identify slash attune to the sword she got from Marcus. Sure. As you identify the sword, the sword glows. And from the sword glowing, you all see a line starts at the beginning of the sword, comes out of the sword, and a viper-like creature, not unattached to the sword, looks at all of you and smiles. And we'll figure out what the heck's going on with that <gasps> next time as we end tonight's session. So thanks so much, everyone. Your play is a rich. Everyone, let's go buy some stuff. Uh, but thank you so much, listener, for tuning in and being part of the family. If you love what you hear, go find us on social medias, the Facebooks, Twitters, uh, anywhere you get your social media presence. We really do appreciate the love. Uh, also, if you're on Discord, uh, go ahead and hop on to our uh, little Discord chat, uh, Homebrew Network. We are active there. You can make fun of me for how I can't uh, properly read Eldritch Blast. Uh, that you can do that Fifth there. Level uh, Eldritch Blast. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> I hate everything. I'll use everything. my strongest yeah, spell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I seriously, pot of uh, green. Oh, pot of green is a good card. Yeah, where was I? Okay, well, hey, listen, fun, all that fun stuff more is in the Discord chat. Hop on. Also, too, uh, wherever you get your podcast from, if you could leave uh, stars or you can give us a review, that helps us out so much. Uh, it's uh, so thankful that you can do that, and we appreciate it. Uh, your time uh, also too if you can we have a patreon homebrew network patreon go ahead and if you can again like i said if you can give a little to support the show that'd be really awesome we really appreciate that uh i will personally sing telegrams for anyone who asks for uh, the patron so boom there you go uh, and i'll do it in spunkle voice so it's even better annoy your friends forever um but <laughs> you uh, everyone can you do whatever you, I will oh I God. will do Kill I will me. do t- Daple the Maple telegrams <laughs> absolutely <laughs> write it down and you can get all this and more for just a two dollar uh, start there so uh, we appreciate your support and listener I hope at the end of the episode you always remember uh, you are loved you're important and you matter join us next time on Power Word Fail bye bye